Hi everyone. Today in this video, let us discuss about the adrenergic receptors. What are the different types of adrenergic receptors? These adrenergic receptors can be classified into two types. They are alpha receptors and beta receptors. Alpha receptors are further classified as alpha 1 and alpha 2 receptors. Whereas beta receptors are classified into three types, beta 1, beta 2 and beta 3 receptors. Now today in this video, let us see what is the function of these uh, alpha and beta receptors and where they are located and how they are going to produce the uh, physiological actions. All these adrenergic receptors are the G protein coupled receptors and when they are going to be activated, they are going to elevate one of the secondary messenger system which produce the physiological actions. Now first of all, let us see what is the type of G protein coupled receptors associated with the each type of adrenergic receptor. So alpha 1 receptors are one type of G protein coupled receptors which are classified as GQ or they can also be called as G alpha Q. So here these receptors are coupled with the elevated levels of the inositol triphosphate and diacylglycerol. So when these receptors are activated IP3 and diacylglycerol levels are going to be increased within the postsynaptic membrane. So this results in the excitation. Similarly alpha 2 receptors are going to be coupled with the G alpha I or simply G I where I indicates inhibitory nature. So these are coupled with the decrease in the cyclic AMP and again it produces inhibition. Beta 1, beta 2 and beta 3. All these beta receptors are G alpha S or G S that means S indicates they are stimulatory in nature. So they are coupled with the increase in the cyclic AMP and they can produce either contraction or relaxation based on the type of target organ. So already we have seen the different types of secondary messengers like IP3 and diacylglycerol, inositol triphosphate and uh, diacylglycerol and second type of secondary messenger is the cyclic AMP. What is the role of these secondary messengers in our physiological system? This IP3 and diacylglycerol always increase the intracellular calcium levels. So they produce the excitation of the postsynaptic membrane. So if it is a muscle, they produce a contraction. If it's a neuron, they produce the excitation. If a gland, they produce the secretion. Similarly, the cyclic AMP. When the cyclic AMP levels are going to be elevated, then what happens? The cyclic AMP will have the different roles based on the type of target organ. So when the cyclic AMP levels are going to be elevated within the heart, they can produce the increased rate of contraction and force of contraction. So cyclic AMP produces a contraction of the cardiac muscle, whereas the same mediator when they are going to be elevated in the smooth muscle, they produce the relaxation. So quite opposite role of cyclic AMP can be observed in the heart and smooth muscle. In the heart it produces contraction, whereas in the smooth muscle it produces relaxation. Similarly, what happens when the cyclic AMP levels are going to be decreased? When the cyclic AMP levels are going to be reduced, it can produce an inhibited response because cyclic AMP can increase the calcium which responds for the activation of the postsynaptic membrane. If we just remember the physiological roles of these secondary messengers, we can easily understand functions of the adrenergic receptors. And here there is no receptor which is associated with the decreased levels of IP3 and diacylglycerol because IP3 and diacylglycerol are always activated by G protein coupled receptors. Now let us see how these alpha 1 receptors are going to produce a contraction. These alpha 1 receptors are the seven transmembrane G protein coupled receptors. So when the norepinephrine is going to bind to these alpha 1 receptors, they activate one of the system phospholipase C system. This phospholipase C is one of the cleavage enzyme which, which can cleave the phosphatidyl inositol biphosphate into the two important secondary messengers. One is IP3 and second is the diacylglycerol. This diacylglycerol can further activate the protein kinase C which then opens the inward going calcium channels. Now the calcium can enter through these calcium channels and IP3 can also release the calcium from the internal stores. Now the raised levels of the intracellular calcium can produce a contraction in the smooth muscle otherwise excitation in the neuron or secretion in the glands. In this way, alpha 1 receptors are excitatory in nature and they increase the intracellular calcium levels. Now let us see the role of the beta receptors. We have already seen that all beta receptors are coupled with the increase in the cyclic AMP. So these beta receptors are G protein coupled receptors having the different types of subunits like alpha, beta, gamma. These subunits are also present on the alpha 1 receptors. Now when this norepinephrine is going to bind to these beta receptors, they act through the alpha subunit, they are stimulated in nature, that's why they call G alpha S and by this they are going to activate the one of the enzyme adenyl L cyclase. This adenyl L cyclase is going to be activated such that it can convert the ATP into cyclic AMP. Now cyclic AMP is one of the secondary messenger by activation of these beta receptors. When the cyclic AMP levels are going to be elevated within the postsynaptic membrane, it can produce the variable effects based on the type of the target organ. Within the heart, the raised levels of cyclic AMP can activate the protein kinase A enzymes, which are the phosphorylating enzymes, which result in the increased levels of the intracellular calcium within the heart. And when the calcium levels are going to be increased, calcium can bind with the troponin, such that it is going to remove the block between the actin and myosin. 
which brings the contraction of the cardiac muscle. In this way, the cyclic AMP can produce a contraction in the cardiac muscle. At the same time, the raised levels of cyclic AMP within the smooth muscle can inactivate one of the important enzyme MLCK, myosin light chain kinases, which are important for the contraction. When these kinase enzymes are inactivated, it results in the relaxation of the smooth muscle. In this way, cyclic AMP produces a contraction in the cardiac muscle, but relaxation in the smooth muscle. And the cyclic AMP can also act on the adipose tissue where it increases the lipolysis by acting through the protein kinase A. So these are the various actions of the beta receptors which are coupled with the increased levels of cyclic AMP. Now already we have seen the physiological role of alpha 1 receptors which are coupled with the IP3 and diacylglycerol which produce the excitation of the postanatic membrane. And beta receptors are coupled with the cyclic AMP, they produce a contraction in the heart, relaxation of the smooth muscle and lipolysis in the adipose tissue. Then what about the alpha 2 receptors? Alpha 2 receptors result in the decrease in the cyclic AMP levels. When these cyclic AMP levels are going to be reduced within the neurons, it results in the reduced levels of calcium which leads to reduced exocytosis. In this way, alpha 2 receptors are inhibitory in nature and they can inhibit the release of the neurotransmitters. Now let us see the location and what are the physiological actions produced by these adrenergic receptors. So let us start with the location. The first one is the alpha 1 receptors. These alpha 1 receptors are mainly having three locations. One is the smooth muscle. They are present on the different types of smooth muscles including the vascular smooth muscle and they are also present on the liver as well as they are also present on the salivary glands. So what are the different types of smooth muscles on which the alpha 1 receptors are present? So the first one is the vascular smooth muscle where the alpha 1 receptors are present and responsible for the contraction of the vascular smooth muscle and they are also present on the other smooth muscles like the eye, bladder, prostate, uterus and GI smooth muscle. So alpha 1 receptors are coupled with the IP3 and diacylglycerol which results in the excitation or contraction. So in all of these smooth muscles, alpha 1 receptors produce a contraction except the GI smooth muscle. On the GI smooth muscle, still alpha 1 receptors are present but they are coupled with the opening of the potassium channels. When these potassium channels are going to be opened, they produce a hyperpolarization which results in the relaxation of the GI smooth muscle. So alpha 1 receptors produce a contraction of all smooth muscles except the GI smooth muscle. Similarly, what is the role of alpha 1 receptors on the liver? Within the liver, they can increase the glycogenolysis. The breakdown of the glycose into the glucose is going to be produced by alpha 1 receptors. Next one is on the salivary glands. Because they are excited in nature, they produce a secretion of the saliva. So these three are the physiological roles of the alpha 1 receptors. They produce a contraction of all smooth muscles except the GA smooth muscle where they produce a relaxation. And on the liver, they increase the glycogenolysis and from the salivary gland, they increase the secretions. Similarly, second one is the alpha 2 receptors. Alpha 2 receptors are mainly located at the presynaptic neurons and since they are going to be coupled with the decrease in the cyclic AMP, they are inhibitory in nature, they prevent the exocytosis. Therefore, these alpha 2 receptors are going to decrease the norepinephrine release as well as the acetylcholine release. So this is one of the important actions of the alpha 2 receptors within the periphery and these receptors are also present within the CNS as a presynaptic neurons where they decrease the central sympathetic discharge. That's why we have one of the drug clonidine which is a alpha 2 agonist thereby it decreases the central sympathetic discharge. In this way, alpha 2 receptors are auto-inhibitory in nature. They decrease the release of the neurotransmitters like the norepinephrine and acetylcholine. Apart from these action on the neurons, these alpha 2 receptors are also present at the two other locations. One is at the pancreas and second one is the platelets. Pancreatic beta cells are going to release one of the important hormone insulin and since alpha 2 receptors are auto-inhibitory in nature, they inhibit the exocytes of few of the mediators. So within the pancreas, alpha 2 receptors are going to decrease the insulin release thereby they can increase the glucose levels within the body. So that's why sympathetic system can elevate the glucose levels by increasing the hepatic glucose production through the alpha 1 receptors and by inhibiting the insulin release from the pancreas through the alpha 2 receptors. And these alpha 2 receptors can also produce inhibitory effect on the platelet so they can inhibit the platelet aggregation. Next one is the beta 1 receptors. Beta 1 receptors are mainly located on the heart as well as they are present on the kidney and third location is the adipose tissue. But their main location is on the heart that's why they are called as cardiac and since these beta 1 receptors are coupled with the increase in the cyclic AMP which produce the excitation of the cardiac muscle. So within the heart these beta 1 receptors increase the rate of contraction that means they produce the positive chronotropic effect and they increase the force of contraction they produce positive inotropic effect and as the rate and force increases they increase the cardiac output. And because of all these effects, they can also increase the cardiac one. In this way, beta 1 receptors are going to stimulate the heart, thereby they increase the rate and force of contraction, as well as they also increase the automaticity in the cardiac muscle. And what is their role in the kidney? So within the renal system, one of the mediators that is going to be released is the renin. 
and this renin can activate the renin angiotensin system which can increase the sodium absorption and vasoconstriction so beta 1 receptors can act on the kidney thereby they can increase the renin release which results in the vasoconstrictive response and what is the reaction on the adipose tissue on the adipose tissue beta 1 receptors can increase the lipolysis because when the cyclic amp levels increases it results in the activation of protein kinase a which increase the lipolysis next is the beta 2 receptors beta 2 receptors are mainly present on the smooth muscle but we can classify them into two types they are present on the vascular smooth muscle and they are present on the other smooth muscles because the beta 2 receptors produce their uh, predominant action on only few of the vascular smooth muscles where they are going to produce the vasodilatation because beta 2 receptors are going to be coupled with the increase in the cyclic amp when the cyclic amp levels increases within the smooth muscle they produce a relaxation so these beta 2 receptors produce a vasodilatation only in the few of the blood vessels supplying to the skeletal muscle liver and heart so in other systemic blood vessels the beta 2 receptors are still present but they are not predominant only alpha 1 receptors are predominant which produce the vasoconstriction then what is the action of the beta 2 receptors on the other smooth muscles so other smooth muscles like the eye bronchioles bladder uterus and gi smooth muscle in all of these smooth muscles these beta 2 receptors produce a relaxation and apart from these smooth muscles beta 2 receptors are also present at the other locations beta 2 receptors are also present on the liver as well as they are present on the neurons and they are present on the mast cells just like the alpha 1 receptors the beta 2 receptors can increase the glycogenolysis within the liver and on the neurons they can produce some excitation so they can increase the release of the mediators like the norepinephrine so that's why beta 2 receptors are auto stimulatory in nature this is quite opposite to the alpha 2 receptors alpha 2 receptors are auto inhibitory in nature whereas beta 2 receptors are auto stimulatory in nature the beta 2 receptors can also act on the mast cells and they can inhibit the degranulation thereby they can decrease the histamine release epinephrine can be used for the treatment of anaphylactic shock anaphylactic shock is a hypersensitive reaction where more histamine is going to be released which can be blocked by epinephrine because epinephrine can act through the beta 2 receptors thereby they can inhibit the degranulation of the mast cells so these are the other actions of the beta 2 receptors finally beta 3 receptors beta 3 receptors are mainly located in the adipose tissue and since these receptors are coupled with the increase in the cyclic amp they can produce a stimulation within the adipose tissue which results in the lipolysis the breakdown of the triglycerides into free fatty acids is going to be mediated by beta 3 receptors so all we have seen beta 1 receptors are also present on the adipose tissue but many of the fatty tissues are going to express the beta 3 receptors which produce the lipolysis in this way adrenergic receptors are widely distributed in our physiological system but we can easily remember them alpha 1 is coupled with the ip3 and diacylglycerol which is excitatory in nature alpha 2 is a decrease in the cyclic amp which is inhibitory in nature and all beta receptors are increase in the cyclic amp they are both excitatory as well as inhibitory in nature alpha 1 receptors produce a contraction of the all smooth muscles except the gi smooth muscle where they produce a relaxation and alpha 2 receptors are mainly inhibiting the neurotransmitter release beta 1 receptors are going to stimulate the heart beta 2 receptors are going to produce a relaxation of all smooth muscles and beta 3 receptors are mainly increasing the lipolysis these are the main functions of adrenergic receptors so that's about the adrenergic receptors their location and physiological role hope you have enjoyed this video if you like this video please subscribe to our channel share this video with your friends post your comments in the comment box thank you for watching this video